Okay, so we're trying to make a bunch of charcoal. We're not just trying to get the brush burnt. So I make a little fire and I feed it continually with similar sized stuff, kind of consistency size. And each time you throw brush on, you throw on a whole arm load so that the coals get crushed down and you continually feed it so that it's drawing so fast that the oxygen is sucked out of the middle and so the coals underneath go out. And so you get layers and layers of coals that are going out because you're continually adding new stuff. And this ended up a pile that was kind of cone-shaped. Um, I spread it in order to douse it. So we're going to light it. And then once you're done feeding the fire, once you poop out or run out of brush, it gets you hot. You have to carefully douse it. Just pour the water very carefully over all of it so that you don't disturb it because the outer layer is what's burning and you don't want to get them all mixed in and you certainly don't want to throw the water and have coals end up on the other side into the grass. So we're just going to feed arm loads as fast as we can right into the middle. We're going to try to keep it in like a five foot circle. Those are my friends from
for the plants and they hold moisture. So I'm using it where there's high traffic areas. The goats usually pee just before they come out of the gate. Um, also in their house in the bedding. And also I've mixed it with seed when it's wet and just spread it thickly in strips into the sod and had the, the plants totally take out by the purple, but it's also just holding that moisture. It's really plant friendly. So, and it's a way of fixing carbon that really stays around for hundreds of years in your soil. So I've been dousing part of the pile because we don't have much brush now, and as I see white coals, I mean white, yeah, the white ashes on the coals, the coals are burning away because they have air. When the fire is going, it's sucking the air away. Probably also blowing some ashes away, but mainly it creates a vacuum and it does put the coals out that are underneath. As soon as you don't have a fire on top of it, the surface starts accumulating on the fire. So you want to be dousing it as you don't have room to feed it. So I'm going to just be feeding the last little bits and dousing it everywhere that doesn't have fire. There we go. So I measured this pile to be about a yard and a third, a cubic yard, and a third of a cubic yard. Twice as much as I did the other day alone in two hours. We took three hours of, from lighting to dousing on this pile. I spread it out into kind of a rectangle to measure it, and also to dig down and make sure nothing's lit, and keep um, dousing. I used, well, I haven't quite used 40 buckets yet. I think 36. So far, 36 buckets at like three and a half gallons each. So going on probably by the time I'm done, because maybe a few places will still start smoking a little pretty soon as it dries. Um, so I have four buckets left to dump, and that'll probably be enough. It looks like it's doing good. It's a lot of char, three hours of feeding with one, two, three, four, five, six people. But that was because the brush was all over this pasture in different piles. It wasn't right handy the way it was the other day when I burned by myself. And I know at the end we were losing more to ashes because we weren't able to feed it as steadily when we were hauling big sleds and then having to fill them far away. But all in all, pretty productive morning. It's still before noon. Started, well, met at 8.30, uh, at 8, started at 8.30. This was the pile the other day. It's not good to have the coals this close. Some of them lit simply from the heat, I believe. They relit and we had to douse it again. Um, good work. Thank you, everybody.